In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our one true God. Greetings, everybody. My name is Archbishop Gregory, head of the Genuine Orthodox Church of America, the remnant, the true and only remnant of the Russian Church. And today we are going to continue our series on Orthodoxy Today, Exposing the Heretics. And this is number 10. And today's topic is the Romanian Old Calendar Movement, commonly known as Slatio Ara, the Romanian Church has two groups, the state church, which is in the ecumenical movement, and the old calendars, which have separated from the official church. But unfortunately, they were deceived and went into communion with an old calendarist who was an ecumenist, an old calendarist from Greece who called himself anti-ecumenical, not a heretic, but in reality he was a big heretic. His name was Cyprian of Philae, the head of the Synod of of resistors, he called himself. This is the main problem with the old calendarist church of Romania. They went into communion with a heretic. They were deceived. The Romanian old calendar movement started with Metropolitan Galic Galactian put up his picture. He, he led the church for four years. Then came Metropolitan Glicari. During his time, he was deceived by the Cyprianites. He led the church for 25 years and died in 1985. Then came the Metropolitan Silvestu, put up his picture. He led the church for seven years. And then came Vlasi, Metropolitan Vlasi. He led the church for 30 years until a few months ago. And this is the big news from Romania. Because the old calendar synod of Vlasi, they're called Slati Oara. They finally had enough. Something moved them to wake up and say, we don't want to be in communion anymore with Kyprianites. So we are going to break communion with Archbishop Kalinikos of the Greek Old Calendar Movement. Kalinikos, who took the whole synod of the Cyprianite heretics and united with them with no repentance. And the Romanians, who were united with the Cyprianites, followed them and were also united to the Greeks under Kalinikos. And also, at the same time, this happened two months ago, they decided we had enough of the conduct of our Archbishop Vlasi because he was living an immoral life. So they deposed him. Their synod of nine bishops now. Remember, this is the biggest old calendar 
uh, church in the world. They have nine bishops, and sad to say, being in communion with Cyprian for what? 43 years. 43 years being in communion with the heretic. You've got to realize that that has an effect on people, and especially the bishops, which are not supposed to be in communion with the heretic for 43 minutes, never mind 43 years. But these bishops became corrupted. And we should first start with Glicieri. He's mostly associated with this, with this group. He was born in 1881. He became a monk in 1916, and he was ordained a priest in 1920. Then came the change of calendar, the change of calendar, which was a big temptation for so many people. If you don't have a theological understanding, then this temptation can swallow you and even jeopardize your salvation. Like happened in Greece, where this simple monk, Matthew of Bretzina, decided that he knows better than anybody in the Orthodox Church by saying, if you accept the new calendar, you are a graceless schismatic outside the church. So this is what happened in Romania also. Because there was a reaction to the change of calendar. What happened? Probably just like in Greece, the demon that was inciting the fanatics in Greece said, look at, look, at, look at the turmoil we've caused among these Orthodox Christians. Let's now go to Romania and see if we could do the same thing there. So they found Galaktion and Glikiri and convinced them to take the fanatical, unorthodox, Matthewite way of thinking. Now, this Glikiri, an ambitious person, I think, and instead of following, instead of following what the Russian church has decreed, he went on a separate path of separation from uh, the state church that accepted, accepted the new calendar. Now, even in Greece, those who, ha who understood, who had a theological understanding of the calendar issue, said this change in the calendar is not right, it's a mistake but it doesn't cause the Holy Spirit to depart and make those people who accept the new calendar heretics. It doesn't separate them from the church. And the Russian church did not break communion with anybody because of the calendar issue, because it was, at that time, a mistake, not so serious. As, but Glikiri, in 1926, he went into the wilderness. He separated from the church, considering the Romanian church schismatic. Now, of course, 
it is a schism, but not a schism that is so severe that it would it would cause them to fall away from the church. So why break away? Why not live like the great bishops, like the Russian church? You're still in communion with them, but you don't have to follow the new calendar. You can commemorate the saints of the old calendar. You can do that secretly. What happened in Greece? Three hierarchs left in 1935. And up until 1935, they were in communion with their, with their state church. But they were following the old calendar. They weren't following the new calendar. So Glicuri could have done this. But he decided or uh, was incited by the devil to separate as if the state church is graceless. So then <clears throat> in 1927 he has a dream. And we're going to call it dream number one. He has, this man is a real dreamer. Uh, these dreams puff himself up. Puff himself up. And so, this dream that he was is the only one to preach to the world. He was the leader of, of the Orthodox in all the world. In 1928, he visited the Holy Mountain and wanted to get a recommendation from them so that he could be ordained. Ordained. He wanted to be ordained a bishop to establish a hierarchy in Romania. And they looked at this dreamer and said, no. So, a few years later, where does he go? He goes to Jerusalem. And he asks the patriarch of Jerusalem, ordain me. Ordain me a bishop, and I will go back and do havoc in the church of Romania. <clears throat> and lead an old calendars group. We have many people who don't want to be with the new calendar. And the Patriarch of Jerusalem said to him, no. In 1935, three Greek bishops, Metropolitan, Chrysostom of Florina, Germanius of Dimitras, and Chrysostom of Zakynthos, they said, we are going to leave the, the New Calendar Church and lead this one million people who don't want to accept uh, the New Calendar. They themselves did not accept the New Calendar, but they were, they were in communion with the state church. Now, Glikiri could have gone from Romania over the border and come down to Greece and visited these bishops. But nowadays they say he didn't do that because he was restricted, because the communists were, were stopping him. But they are the they are lying. The communists didn't come until 1947. And beside that, Glikiri, he went to the Holy Mountain. And then in 1928, and then he went to, and went to Jerusalem in 1930. It doesn't sound like he was restricted from going anywhere. Perhaps he didn't go to the three Greek bishops because he heard that they considered the new calendar as a corruptible 
schism. A schism that can be corrected. Then in 1936, he has another dream, and I call it a daydreaming. And because it's Maybe he was daydreaming, but I don't know if there's any witnesses that he was taken uh, by the authorities and they wanted to burn him. So they lit a fire and they threw him in the fire and the fire didn't hurt him and he walked right through the fire and he thanked those people who threw him in for warming him up. <clears throat> but I don't see any evidence for this at all. Okay, now we're coming to another dream. We'll call it dream number three in 1940. Father Glickiri, a good dreamer, sees an angel of light. And what this angel of light tells him we don't know, but he, he is accepted as an angel of light, and it's recorded that he saw an angel of light. Then, a year later, in 1941, <clears throat> Father Glickiri has dream number four. Dream number four. And in this dream... Prophet Elias comes to him with St. Thomas of Mount Milio. And the prophet tells, uh, gives, him, gives him bread. This time, <clears throat> his dream, he receives a couple of loaves of bread. He tells him, eat this, and in a couple of weeks, I'll be back to give you two more loaves. Oh. And so Father Glickiri, of course, accepts this dream. And he accepts everything that he sees. That was dream number four. I guess he was never told, you're supposed to reject dreams. But he was not instructed in the basic monastic rules. Now we come to dream number five in 1941. Supposedly an angel appeared to Glickiri in a dream and told him, write down some verses from the Akathis to Prophet Elias and some prayers. Somehow this inspired a boyer. I think that's what the account is, a Santescu, to donate <clears throat> money to establish the monastery of Slatior Ara. He donated money to buy land so they could build the monastery in the county of Slati or Ara. And probably this is how it started. Okay, so now we come to dream number six. In the winter of 1941, 1942, Father Glickiri has two more significant dreams that he says are from God. The first one, number six, we're going to call it, <clears throat> he was in a large and beautiful church. And he was beholding lights, crosses, saints. And he had, a, he had warmth in his soul and kindness in his heart. And that's dream number six. It got recorded in his life. Okay, now in 1942, we come to dream number seven. He sees a vision 
and he's in a large, beautiful church. And he looks up into the dome, and he sees the year printed there, 1982, marked someplace on the dome. And he's trying to understand what in the world is, is God trying to tell me? And then he hears a whisper to him. And, and the whisper said, Glikiri, go and tell everyone that this is the year that Antichrist will enter the world or the Antichrist will be born in 1982. So now this, this is a vision, this is a dream that's now a prophecy. So let's see how his prophecy came true. 1982. If Antichrist was born in 1982, that means he had to start reigning 30 years later, which is 2012. If he started reigning in 2012, the end of the world would come six years later, in 2018. But wait, we are living in 2022 and 23 coming. So we must be living in the twilight zone because Christ already came, Antichrist already came, and look at we didn't even we didn't even know about it. But Glikiri, the dreamer, he should have understood that his dreams are deception. Okay, now we come to dream number eight. Again, now the mother, mother of God appears to him in this dream. Now his dream sometimes is recorded he's sleeping, sometimes he's dreaming while he's, while he's awake. And he smells the beautiful fragrance of incense. And the mother of God supposedly tells him, do you see my elect that are around me? And he sees the mother of God with many people. And she tells him, make a monastery to gather my flock. So, he sets his mind on making the monastery of Slati or Ara. So now, from 1945 to 1955, 10 years, he's, he's just a priest, although he's seeking very hard to be ordained a bishop. So in 1955, he meets Archbishop Galaction, Corden, who decides that he is going to leave the State Church of Romania and be part of the O'Calendar movement in his country. And so he goes to Glikiri. <clears throat> and now he resigns from the state church. And he's and he says things that are kind of contradictory in his letter to the state church. He says, I hereby declare my I declare before the clergy and the people and all the parishes and monasteries of the territory of Romania that I, Archbishop Galactian, of my own free will, unsolicited by anyone, have accepted the proposal and the choice that the people made to me in my person. And 
If you laugh, don't laugh long. Because he said, I was unsolicited, but I accepted the solicitation. So I declare myself head of the old calendar movement. Now, who received him as a bishop in this separate church? This is another completely illogical and uncanonical event. That priests and laymen can receive into their church, a heretical or a schismatic, graceless bishop. This is impossible. And at the end of Galactian's life, he pleaded and pleaded to go back to the new calendar, to be received by the new calendar State Church of Romania, realizing that he made a mistake. Now at this time, 1955, if he would look next door, he would have seen that the old calendars in Greece had no bishops for five years because the three bishops who came out uh, either reposed or went back to the state church and Metropolitan Christostom Florina did not want to ordain anybody because he saw, among other things, that we had a fanatic. I ordained Matthew, the Matthewite, the head of the Matthewites, who was a fanatic. And we don't want another bishop like that. So he didn't ordain anybody. Metropolitan and Chrysostom did not ordain anyone, probably be enlightened by God that in the future our Russian church would provide the episcopacy for the Greek old calendar movement, which indeed happened. Remember the saying, better no bishop than a bad bishop. Okay, now we come to 1956, one year later. And this Archbishop Metropolitan Galacta sees that no one is going to go and commune with him, so he decides to follow the example of Matthew and ordain <clears throat> Archimandrite Evloi Ota, as bishop by himself. Now, this has already been condemned. It's against the first canon, so this is a big, big mistake. Now, this is another time that the old calendarists did something deliberately uh, detrimental to themselves. Before that, they were dreamers, they were seeking ordination, that's all, you know, that's, it's, you could say, part of life. But now, they have a bishop, Galaktion, and he decides to break the first canon of orthodoxy. And this is wrong and, and to be under such a bishop is, is not very healthy. Let's put it that way. Then, <clears throat> with this bishop that he ordained, Akamendrite Evloi, Ota, they ordained Lycuria in the same year. And now Glycuri finally has his dream come true. He was dreaming all this time of being a bishop. So now he's a bishop in 1956. Galatian dies in 1959. And as we said before, tries to return to the state church 
and they reject him, and he dies without complete repentance. And Glikiri is now leading the All Calendars. In 1979 is the beginning of the Kyprianite catastrophe. In 1979 is when the eight Achaemenrites tricked the Archbishop, deceived the Synod, and were ordained bishops uncanonically. And they said, <clears throat> who can we go in communion with? Because no one recognizes us. So they went across the border to Romania, as we said, and they met with Glikiri. Now, Glikiri, who is not used to rejecting dreams or temptations. He sees the Kalistis Synod come, these bishops from Greece, and they're telling him, we are Orthodox. We follow the canons. We live an upright life. And Glikiri who's not experienced, as I said, in rejecting anything that comes to him, opens his arms and it receives them and goes in communion with them. Another grave mistake because he was deceived. He went into communion with an uncanonical synod. The lifespan of that synod was just going to last one or two years. And then another synod was going to pop up, the synod of resistors, who were not only uh, schismatic, but heretical, because they teached a different type of orthodoxy. They were ecumenical. And so the Romanians stayed with this Achaemenrite Cyprian who was made a bishop. So, Glikiri, not realizing, not very smart, stays with him until he dies in 1985. So let's recap a little bit first. Who is this Cyprian? This Cyprian was at first a, a priest in the state church of Greece. He started a monastery. And then he was overlooked when it came time to ordain their priests to the episcopacy. I don't know how many times he was overlooked, but... He couldn't take it anymore, and so he said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the New Calendar Church, and I'm going to the Old Calendar Church in Greece. And so he comes over and is received by Archbishop Oxentius as an Archimandrite with a monastery. And then during the time of Pentecost, when they ordained bishops, he was overlooked again. And because his pride was so forceful in him, he devised a way to deceive two elderly bishops, Caiustus and Anthony to ordain without the permission of the Archbishop Accentius, in other words, to ordain in disobedience, in other words, to ordain uncanonically, himself and seven other Archimandrites, most notably the one that is now head of the Greek Church, 
Hellenicus was one of the notorious eight Archimandrites. So Callistus and Antony went ahead and ordained these Archimandrites. The question is, if something is done in disobedience, is there validity there? If something is done against the canons, is there validity there? Eventually, this Callistus group of Greeks fell apart completely because their archbishop, whom they were disobedient to, deposed them for their breaking of the canons. And so they, in order to remain bishops, asked their archbishop, if we repent and come back, will you receive us? And Oxentius agreed. So eventually, one by one, they all went back to their archbishop and say, please forgive us. All except for one whose name was Cyprian, whom we are speaking about. So now they have the synod of resistance. And did these collection of illegitimate bishops, did they ever look at the history of their leader, Cyprian, and contemplate what they were doing, that the man was deposed from the new calendars, then he joined the old calendar movement, and because he wasn't ordained there, he tricked two bishops to ordain him, and then he was deposed there by the old calendars also. He's deposed twice. Did that phase them? No. Then what happened? Then an earthquake happened in Athens, a massive earthquake, where over a hundred people died, and many were injured, over a thousand uh, were injured, and 50,000 buildings were. A massive earthquake that had the epicenter right in the middle of the monastery of Cyprian. In fact, the earth opened up right through the center of his church from the front door down to the altar. Did that phase these, these synod of resistor bishops of Cyprian? No. Nothing phased them. Then, in 2007, their leader, their leader falls into a coma. This heretical leader, Cyprian, falls into a coma for six years. He doesn't move. He's in bed. And they keep him alive. Then, in 2009, we issue our anathema against Cyprian, the heretic, our church, the Genuine Orthodox Church of America issued an anathema against the heretic Cyprian of Philly. Quote, to the deposed Cyprian, Metropolitan Cyprian Consumbus, the exorcist, the propagator of demonic teaching, and to all those who follow him, who teach that those who fall into heresy are still part of the Church of Christ, that their mysteries are grace-filled, and who teach that the Church of Christ is divided into two parts, one ailing with heresy and one healthy without heresy, and thus maintain that the holy body of Christ 
not only can be divided, but also be infected with the disease of falsehood. Who oppose the Apostle Paul, who says that the Holy Church is a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And who commune heretics and have therefore succumbed to the heresy of ecumenism, anathema. That was issued by us in 2009. The that phase, the Cyprian synod of resistor bishops. No. Then, in 2013, Cyprian dies after six years in a coma. This now made an impression on these bishops because he had the death of a heretical leader. His body became hard as a rock. His mouth was gaped open. They couldn't close it and the stench coming from his body was not the mark of a holy person. And so these synod of resistor bishops said, what shall we do? We're going to end up like this guy. And that was a horrible thought. So they said, let's as a group go back to the Greek church which we left and deposed us. After all, the head of this group now is Kalinikos, one of the notorious eight that was ordained with our illustrious leader, Cyprian, when he was an Archimandrite. He was one of the eight Archimandrites. And if he will receive us, then we're all set. We don't have to give up anything. We don't have to repent. We don't have to shame ourselves by saying, forgive me, or I repent, or accept me as a repentant heretic. We just go back and be united and just join the synod. And that's what they did. And unfortunately, the Romanian church, which was in communion with the synod of resistance, they followed him. And their leader at that time was Vlasi, Metropolitan Vlasi. So, they had this big conversion going over to the Greek Old Calendar Movement, the Greek Old Calendar Church, led by Kalinikos. And of course, we told them, you people are deceiving yourselves. You are wrong by still being in communion with Cyprian because none of the bishops who joined Kalinikos ever repented. These bishops have lost the true understanding of how the church works. You have to repent to someone of your equal rank or higher. Look at Arius when he wanted to come back to the church. He repented to the Patriarch of Constantinople. When Pyrrhus, the Monothelite, wanted to repent, he had to repent to a patriarch because he was the patriarch of Constantinople. He had to re repent to someone of equal rank. And even in our times, and Sergius, in the time of the living church, he was Metropolitan Sergius. When he understood that he was in error and wanted to repent, he had to go back to the patriarch who never fell from the church. 
That's how a person is received back into the church. You can't repent to yourselves and think that the grace of God is going to come back to you just because you broke communion with heretics, you have to be received by the church because you weren't the church when you were in heresy. And uniting with Callinicus. And who is Callinicus? He's a Cyprianite in his soul and in his heart. He openly gives communion to heretics but will not admit it. And he receives all the Cyprianite bishops who openly give communion to heretics and admit it. And even after we wrote them a letter, we visited them even, and told them, look, your people are making a mistake. You can't follow Cyprian wherever he goes, whatever he does. They didn't respond. And now we come to now in 2022 and for some reason something clicked in the head of the Romanian old calendar's bishops. They were living the good life. They were being swallowed up by the world but something happened uh, probably to prove their legitimacy. So in 2022, this year, the old calendar bishop said, we had enough of our Archbishop Metropolitan Vlasi. All these years he's been living with a woman, which is, that's an immoral life. And so they deposed him. And then they said, by the way, we have, we will have enough also of Cyprian. We've been in communion with him for 43 years. And now we want to we cut off communion with him. So that means we're going to have to cut off communion with the Greek old calendars and the Kalinikos. Okay. But where do they go to repent? They go nowhere. They say... Just because we repented, that w that's enough to make us orthodox again. Really? After 43 years being in communion with the, with the heretic, the humanist, that's not how orthodoxy works. But now, the, Gre uh, the Romanian old calendars, they don't even make an effort to go back to anybody. They say, we are rich, we have many beautiful, big churches. We have many people. We are not going to be corrected by anyone, by all the mistakes that we have <sighs> swallowed and digested for 43 years. No one's going to correct us, especially that archbishop in Colorado who is telling us to repent. He's treating us like we're heretics. So the Romanian people, what is the solution for you who want to be in the church? You find the clergy in Romania who are part of the church, and that is our clergy. And you could look them up on our website and contact them. We have clergy in Tura. We have clergy in Dragoshani. And it's not easy. Romania is a big country, but the certain things in life you have to accept as inconveniences and you have to struggle. If, it, if a true clergyman and you're going to receive the true mysteries are in a city that's two hours away, three hours away, 
So you sacrifice and you go there. That's all you have to do. Christ is watching you. The great country of Romania has experienced a tragedy. Okay. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to this video about the Romanian Old Calendar movement. Slati Oara, commonly known. And to those in Romania, may God grant you the strength to do the proper thing. Amen.